What is going on, everyone? This is a special, special episode of Life and Transitions Experts podcast. My name is Courtney Rollins. I'm the host of this uh, podcast and this YouTube channel or this uh, uh, podcast if you listen to it from Spotify or, or Apple, wherever you listen to it. But you all know, or if you've listened to this before, that I... What this is going on, everyone? Oh, that's live right there. So there I am. <laughs> So we're live on YouTube, as you see. That's the, we're live on YouTube. So go check out the YouTube channel if you're already there. I mean, if you haven't gone there, but this channel really focuses on helping people or talking to people who help people through some of the biggest transitions in life. Quite often, it focuses on on probate and estate planning and family planning, and so often involved in that. As a matter of fact, seventy to about eighty percent of the time involved. In it. Don't ask me where the quote comes from. There is property and real estate involved. And today I have with me uh, Sheena Mullins, the wholesale queen. And if you don't know what wholesaling is, trust me, you're going to learn. And you're going to be blown away. Or if you have, if you do know what it is, you're going to learn even more because she's an awesome mentor and awesome wholesaler out in uh, Greenville, South Carolina. But Sheena Mullins, how are you doing? Hello. How are you? It's always a pleasure. I'm well and happy to be here hey. as normal. This is... This is uh, such an honor and privilege to always sit with you because you are always on social media on every platform, dropping so many gems. So I'm 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 mainly here so I can soak up whatever you got for me to learn as well. Well, sure. I'm about to give myself a circular compliment because you say you know it's it's awesome coming across you and meeting you because uh, you know like minds and uh, attract. And when I would be on Instagram or on social media, I would see this person posting all the time, learn with the wholesale queen. And, and when I saw your channel, I was just drawn to how, um, you know, how giving, how open and how, how you put yourself out there in such a way that's going to like, that inspires other people. And then you, as you uh, continue to help people grow and learn, it's like, wow, she's a bridge builder. She actually reaches back and helps people uh, get to places that they are. So tell, tell folks a little about what you do what is wholesaling and and, and uh, yeah yeah people get excited about what who you are and what is wholesaling. Okay, well I thank you for there. that introduction, you guys. But uh, Courtney is uh, not nothing short of amazing himself. Um, <laughs> uh, entrepreneur, guy of his word, um, very ethical, and I like to first and foremost um, deal with people that are ethical and that are going to do business clean right. and you know, stand by what they say that they're going to do. And that is something that I pride myself in. I'm Sheena Mullins, the Wholesale Queen. You can find me on Instagram at Learn with the Wholesale Queen and on every other platform as the Wholesale Queen or Learn with the Wholesale Queen on Facebook. I am a mentor. I actually work with several hundred students across the U.S. Some of them are out of the U.S. Um, I got two new Canadian students. Oh, wow. I got students in, how do you say, Qatar, um, yeah. Tanzania. So I'm getting students all over. I just got a new student in, in the Philippines. So it's it's coming. I said last year this time that I was going to go international and global. Well, it's starting to roll out, guys. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm even speaking things into existence. Um, you know, one thing about wholesaling is you can reach people everywhere. And this actual uh, this this tool that we use while we're doing wholesaling, it doesn't have to stop with just real estate. You know, you mm -hmm. learn so much more um, than just a strategy. It's not just a strategy. I, I said it today mm -hmm. in my post, it's a game changer because no matter where you're at, no matter who you're doing these deals with, you can actually make other business opportunities from wholesaling. You mm -hmm. can actually meet people that are going to turn you into other uh, into other uh, business platforms that you can use from the money and the income that you're going to get mm -hmm. from wholesaling. So if wholesaling is not your end all be all, you're going to take the income that you're making and start to do the things that you desire to do. And that's what I love so, so importantly about it. Like you don't have to have just a hundred percent desire to do this, but when you mm -hmm. start doing it and start profiting from it, how could you not want to do it? Right. Those skills are so applicable, like you said, across different spaces and different areas. I, I really, um, I'm, I've noticed that the more and more I work on my negotiation skills, it's really telling me you actually have to be a good person. Now you have to be able to be a, a, a listener and to be responsive to, to folks. But I do want to back up real quick because there may be somebody, one person maybe watching, you know, 
uh, that may not know what wholesaling is. Could you explain what, what wholesaling real estate? We're talking about wholesaling real estate and what that is. Yes. So wholesaling real estate is a strategy in the real estate world that we use. Um, some people think of it uh, as, you know, low. I think of it as all time high. That's why I call myself the wholesale queen. Um, but it is a strategy and it takes little to no money to actually get into the real estate game. So no matter what you want to become, if you want to be a developer, if you want to be an investor, if you want to just uh, own property and, and then property manage it yourself. Wholesaling is a great way to do it. It is when you are taking a document um, and you're finding an owner that needs your help that doesn't necessarily have the time or and or the money to bring properties up to market or they're in a uh, situation where they need to move faster than traditional real estate by putting it with a real estate agent, mm -hmm. putting it on the market. These properties are off market. So what that means is it's not going to go into the MLS, which is the multiple listing service. They're going to go to someone like myself and say, hey, Sheena, I am interested in actually getting rid of my property. It has a amount of repairs that needs to be done. And what we do as wholesalers, and I'm going to say this as key, we offer them a fair price for their property hmm. based on the condition that it is in. Hmm. Now, can these properties be placed on the market? Sure they can, as is. Um, but what happens is, unless it's investors, you're going to find that typical homeowners are calling to ask the, the, the sellers or the owners about the property. And mm -hmm. with, with that being said, they're coming with traditional financing most of the time. And with traditional mm -hmm. financing, what I mean by that is the bank is giving them a loan to get it. And loans have requirements. And those requirements are going to have stipulations such as it can't need massive repairs. Mm -hmm. So someone like myself will uh, quickly help them move this property without having all these things in place that's going to hinder them from selling it. So I would get a qualified investor or someone that wants it that is able to pay cash or what we consider as hard money and mm -hmm. close it very quickly. Wow. So uh, the reason I say uh, wow is that uh, you answered uh, maybe two of my questions, but I want to bring them out so that people can hear this because uh, you did say um, for the market value, you're uh, giving a fair price. Um, and that as a wholesaler, you're the document, uh, you're the document, you basically are, uh, when you say document, are you referring to like the purchase agreement or the contract? Or, I mean, I'm leading, but I just, I'm just assuming maybe somebody's coming in and they, oh, I want to learn about this wholesaling. I'm just hearing for the first time. And so it'd be a blessing if they came through our channel. That'd be awesome. But, you know, just in case. Absolutely. So when you're wholesaling, um, you're not physically ever using any of your own money, right? You're not taking any of your money. You're, you're actually um, getting a seller that needs your assistance. And when you do that, you're going to put it under contract. And that contract is the instrument that I'm speaking of. It's an mm -hmm. assignment document, um, assignment of contract. And within that contract, you're actually able to acquire the property and it gives you legal rights to buy and or assign that property. So, you know, depending on what I choose to do with that, I can either be the investor and buy it myself and keep it, or I can decide, hey, this one's not gonna work for me. I'll give it to Courtney because this fits his criteria. And I have, you know, all the rights according to this document to do so. And, you know, that document, that instrument is very important. You have to make sure that all the laws are kosher and copacetic in every state that you're actually doing it in. Because in some states you can only do, for example, one transaction in a year under wholesale without having some type of licensing or oh, yeah, something that, like that. So you want to make sure like that, that you're actually in one of those states where you don't have those uh issues and you don't have to have to worry about that uh, so I, I do want to ask though because uh, i think one thing that's uh that's implied um and uh through the word fair is also that and i've heard a lot of people say this that since we're trading speed and convenience quite often for a discounted price on the property or at least terms that allow us to make money we're not this is, we're, we're here to make money by adding value. We make money. There's no qualms about that at all. Um, but my question is, and, I, and you did answer a couple of times, but I want to really pull it out. Why would anyone, would anyone sell their property 50, 30, 
70 cents to the dollar. Why would why would people even do that? Well, let's break this thing down for them. Yeah, yeah. I, it's like a volleyball. I, I, can't, <laughs> like, listen, I can't tell you why the people would, but I know why all of my fellers decide to do so. Yeah. So what happens is, you know, I kind of went into, you know, a, a couple different reasons. And yeah. one of them is convenience, okay? Mm. Convenience is a big, big reason. Um, and what when I say convenience, what is the convenience of it? Well, mm. when you get ready to list the property, if the agent is not listing it as is, they have to stage the property. Right. Staging it requires it to look a certain way. You know, they need to get it, you know, ready for camera, get the films ready for, uh, or get the photos ready for market. Um, they may need to repair certain things to get it ready for people that are going to be traditional buyers that need conventional loans. Right. Um, they're going to use FHA or USDA. So the property has to be within a certain type of criteria. The other thing is, um, if they're facing like pre foreclosure, they don't have time on their hands. They have a certain deadline to meet before it gets foreclosed upon. So that's another type of property. The other situation could be something like massive repairs and they don't have the money to, to fix it. So what's going to happen after you leave a house that need repairs for right. too long? Condemning happens, citations right. happen, fines happen. So because of these things, you are moving along the, 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 the list of qualifying for someone that say, hey, you know what? I don't want to deal with zoning. I don't want to get code violations. I don't want my house work closed upon. Another one could be divorce. Right. They just really want to get rid of their spouse. And they're like, you know what? I don't like you. You don't like me. Let's do this quickly. Nobody has to know what's going on. Let's sell right. it and be done with it. People could be leaving a job and they don't have time for it to sit on the market. So they say, you know what? I'll take a bit of a cut and it mm -hmm. don't always have to be at 70% on a dollar. You know, mm -hmm. wholesaling doesn't always have to, you know, give them the least amount of money. Sometimes right. it could, it could be for an investor that just wants a turnkey. So guess what? Any discount is still a discount. So let's yeah. say that someone wants to sell a house and it doesn't have a lot of repairs needed, but it has some, then we might find someone that wants rental property or property that they can Airbnb and that's going to work for them. Now they got to go in and use only 10 to 15,000 to make the house look a little bit more pretty and it's an easy sell. So they're not getting, a, you know, getting the property sold with all of the equity gone. Like most people think right. that wholesalers do. That's not what we, that's not what I do. I can speak for right. me and that's not what I teach my students. Right. And all those scenarios that I heard were some form of distress and some form of, of, of pain that you're coming in and providing solutions for. And, and that's what I've seen. And I think we have similar approaches when I when I uh, my my solutions aren't for everyone. One. But when they do match up, I have people walking away very, very happy, very satisfied and up. Uh, because you're you're discussing transitions in life, life transitions expert. This when people are going through distress, and quite often it's during those different transitions, they need support, they need solution, they need people who are caring, but people who also are competent and people who are uh, who you can trust. And that's where folks like uh, Sheena Mola comes in, and folks who are cash buyers out there can come in and can provide some solutions. I think it's uh, cool because you did note earlier how some people may note uh, wholesalers like the the gateway or even on the lower ring when it comes to real estate marketing or investing. And I agree with you though. It's the many people that I know who are doing it at a high level, never take the wholesaling piece away. If you have the skill to find a property or to find, to add value, really, that's what it is. Like, like you said earlier, to, to, to add value and to see opportunity, that's going to take you away. Can you describe uh, has there been a situation where you've been able to help someone in distress yeah. buy their property? And what can, can, I'm putting you on the spot here, but can you, you don't no, have to go into never. full details, that's, but that's what good. was the These feeling? What question. was the, yeah, what These was the thing that people need to know? Yeah, let's describe a time where you, you helped uh, uh, someone and maybe you did get a, a good deep discount and they walked away just so happy because of uh, the support that you gave them. Well, I, I can think of a million and one situations <laughs> um, because that's, again, I try to make sure that the situation is a win-win all around. And I know, you know, in most cases, somebody who's a smart person is going to watch this 
could be another agent, could be a, a broker, a developer, and they're gonna say, well, how's everybody happy? Well, you mm -hmm. get you get three people together that's not greedy, and then the deal works. So we um, we had a, a pre foreclosure situation, and I worked with an agent on this deal. And um, guess what? This agent got approached, and the person wanted them to list their property, and they were looking at how much time they had to work with versus what they needed to execute for the actual seller. Mm. Then once they dug a little deeper, they found out that there were some liens on the property, three of them. Mm. And so not only were they tackling foreclosure, uh, pre-foreclosure, they were tackling these liens. The other situation was that this seller was very, very ill. The mm. house no longer serviced her because she was in a wheelchair. She had Mm -hmm. become ill and needed to be in a wheelchair so she couldn't fit through the doorways anymore she couldn't right. she just really didn't have any use for the house and what we discovered is that timing wasn't on their side she called me reached out to me because she know what I do and she said hey can you help me I, I quickly typed in the address mm -hmm. and I looked at the zip code I looked at some quick numbers such as rental rates um, I looked at things like um, the area, how much a property would go for, if it's a good area for Airbnb. And then I started to think in my mind, what, which one of my investors is going to want this and who will move the mm. fastest? So do I have a list of thousands of investors? I do, but I don't use that list that often. I work with a select few of my investors that are just going to buy and I can count on them to buy several times a month. And that is how you get very, very good at this and you, you build relationships. So mm -hmm. this woman, we were able to basically pay off a loan, okay, oh, which wow. stopped the pre-foreclosure. When we paid off the pre-foreclosure, she was able to take her proceeds, move, and get a new property to live wow. in. So now we've not only made her a situation where she's able to get a house that she could use her wheelchair in, we saved her credit. Wow. So that's what wholesaling should be about. It's not just, I mean, we're not going to, you know, take, take away any of the fancy of it. We do make great money. Absolutely. And, you know, that wasn't one of my biggest deals that I've had because I wasn't looking at it for the money. I didn't have as much time on my hand to find the, the person that was going to pay me the highest. So in that moment, I had to say, okay, who's more important? My pockets at this particular time? No, I got other deals or this actual homeowner mm -hmm. that has no time and I can still make some money and I'm going to still help her get out of this situation. So I decided to make sure I moved the property and everybody was happy, even the agent. And the agent mm -hmm. may mention that, wow, while this is an off-market project, I got paid more than what I would have gotten wow. paid, even if the even at three percent, she got more than six percent. And so, I bet when she has other listings, I wonder who she's going to think about. Who can? She's already uh, called me. We we're on yeah, a couple of deals right now. That is amazing. That is awesome. That's a wonderful thing. Something that I heard. If you are someone who's um who's thinking about wholesaling and needs some type of direction. Maybe you see that success leaves clues and you recognize that almost every success person has some type of mentor. Name an industry, name a person, name anything, and tell me they don't have someone who is there that, that's guiding them and someone or some ones that they're they're guiding. Those that those two ends really help, it seems like, propel people to success. And it seems like you're, you're doing that. But what I heard you say is that you thought about the money definitely comes and it's, it's awesome money. But if you're serving first, that's what's going to be important. And if you have enough leads, you won't feel that scarcity of, oh, my gosh, I have to make this square fit in this circular uh, spag here because I don't have uh, enough leads and all. So uh, that's pretty exciting to see, uh, to hear some of the things that you're doing there. I, I would love to know more about, I know you spoke about your international now students and hundred <laughs> students. Tell me more about that passion. because. That's a, it's a whole different industry. Coaching and wholesaling are two different industries. So tell me more about the, the coaching and the mentor mentoring. So, um, you know, I pondered it for a very long time. It took me about two years before I started to get into the mentorship thing, mainly because you kind of sort of worry about as, as you're the person doing it, 
who's going to antagonize you for saying something wrong or who's mm. going to challenge you for saying something wrong. And then the more I start to do it, I started to do it and I start to get passionate about it. Yeah, and I then that. It comes, that comes across. Yeah. Then I, I started to say, you know what? It really doesn't matter what the next mentor think about me because what I'm showing is what I'm going to show because I'm the only, the one and only wholesale queen. And maybe what I'm going to bring to them and what I'm bringing to the table is what they need me for. Mm -hmm. And I had to realize that I cannot be the end all to everyone. Maybe I am the, the, the first point of what they may need. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show them how to do what I did because I'm starting to show them how I started. So maybe they may not graduate with me. Maybe they're going to go and be bigger than me. So they need the next biggest uh, mentor. So I had to learn that even though I'm mentoring, I can't look at what I'm doing as, as a point of where someone else can ridicule me. I have to look at it like, guess what? No matter what they say, this made me successful. So it doesn't matter. I, I, I made it with this. And as they say, bet on yourself and you can't worry about what everybody else has to say about you. But I became very passionate about it. And as, as I became passionate, I started to fall in love with the idea of other people winning. And then I was able to show up to closings and watch them split a $30,000 check with me and JV deals and get the phone calls late at night. Like, hey, I'm nervous. We got a closing in the morning. Like, I'm really going to make 30 grand. So all of that is very important to see someone make $30,000 at a closing when they were only making $39,000 a year. Mm. So that's why I do this because oh, I know man. that I'm breaking barriers and guess what? It doesn't matter what happens along the way. I'm showing them the way that I learned it. If, if I can't give it to you based off of how I got it, it, I don't know another way. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I, you have a voice, your, your voice and your, what you're adding is a value. And what I like about what you're saying too, is it seems like if you be your authentic self and, oh, just like, um, you know, the Russell Brunson book that we're, we've been reading uh, uh, and all, like, you want to attract the people you want to work with and you have the privilege because you've earned, well, I guess privilege earned, you've, you've earned the right to attract the clientele you want to work with. So if you're being your authentic self and you're a part of their journey for a short amount of time, that's a blessing. If you're part of the journey for a long time, that's a blessing. And it seems like you, I mean, it seems like your your uh, students or mentees, as I've heard you refer to them, are just so um, just so excited to work with you, feel so uh, trusting of you. I've actually had the chance to, uh, you know, work in different capacities with different folks you work with. And they uh, just just the, the conversation with them that you're very thorough when you're uh, I mean, you're not crutches and, uh, and, and but you are definitely care about them. And that's um, that. That, that's something you can't fake. And that's pretty awesome. My question though, is if you were a mentee, what makes, what are some of the characteristics that you're noticing that's making a, a, a successful mentee? What are some of those two or three traits that you're like, oh, I'm starting to notice this person has this. So they're probably going to, you know, lend them to, to more success. Um, I honestly think that um, the, the, the desire is uh, very important when you um, start something, um, be prepared to go in knowing that you're going to win. It's mindset. You have to um, go in believing that you can get something done. And I, I, I think one mistake that a lot of them make is relying on that mentor uh, to carry them and looking at my personalized success um, as their own but what happens is you limit yourself because just because I made 100k in a month and you sitting here just striving to try to get that 100k when you could be making 200k you could make that on a deal so don't look at anybody's individual success and claim it as your own you got to take your your walk the way your walk is handed to you and work what you got because a lot of times while you're looking at someone individualized success, you could be putting limitations and restrictions on yourself because there was a lot of stuff that I didn't know when I started. There was a lot of money I left on the table that I wouldn't dare leave on the table now. And I'm sure as, as I'm growing, there's things that I'm learning now because not only am I just doing residential properties and commercial properties and 35, 40 doors. I've done mobile home parks. I'm closing on commercials and I got strip malls under contract, churches, all types of stuff. There's, you name it, we can do it. Yeah. So 
you know, when you start, I feel like as a mentee, you have to be coachable. You have to realize that it's not an overnight success. Nothing is going to come very easy. And if it does, hooray for you. I'm happy. <laughs> I want you to get it. But in, in the doing will come the learning. And when you learn, you will start to win, but you have to be steady. You have to keep, keep it steady. And at the 30 days, don't give up because that 31st day could be the day that you lock up the biggest deal of your life. I dig that. Yeah. Come with a bet on yourself, have a, uh, the right uh, mindset and keep going. I dig that. I dig that. I, um, I want to know though, next maybe five or 10 years, what is the, what is the, the, the vision? What is SMG and all that look like uh, in the next is SMG, right? SMG financial. SMG financial. What is, what, what is, what is your vision for? Like, you know, what are the things you're excited about that's happening in the next five or 10 years? Well, I'm, I'm doing a lot, man. Like I, I, I feel like, you know, there's some things I can let go of right now that I can tell you guys about. And there's some things that I can't speak on just yet, yeah. just because I believe that you put it out there too soon, you know, I, I, I want to make sure it's, I'm not to count my chickens first, but I, I want to go ahead and make sure that it's going to happen. Mm. But let me bring you up to the speed for the people that don't know what SMG means. Because I'm from Greenville, I'm, I, I live in Greenville, South Carolina, and my whole wholesale journey started right here in Greenville, South Carolina. So I created Sheena Markets Greenville. And then once I started really getting my foot on the ground, I created SMG Financial, which is my buying company that buys, that contracts these properties. And from SMG Financial, I started my private mentorship and group. It stands for Stay Motivated and Grind. Um, that's mm -hmm. where all the mentees is able to get into that private Facebook community. Um, we gather there. We talk about deals there. We JV there. Um, all the new mentees, after their second week, they're able to get inside that group and that causes a community of strength because I can have someone in California doing deals with someone in Charlotte. I can have a, a person from Virginia doing deals with someone in the Philippines. I mean, it's, it's a whole community. And I did an ebook and I did a couple different things that SMG all from wholesaling that, that wholesale feud, like if it wasn't for the wholesale, I wouldn't have been able to do these things. So, you know, I can say in five years, but I mean, I, I, I have to say in this year, you know, I want to have, you know, 30 doors of my own and I want to start seeing a lot more residual income um, because that's where it's at. If you think about wholesaling and you know that you need no money to get into this and then you start making money with this, then what do you start to do with all these great properties? Do you continue to give them away? No, you need to start to acquire them and buy and hold and keep some of them. So I'm working on building my own uh, residential and commercial portfolio. And I'm super excited about that. That That's really on my agenda right now. And that's what I'm going to be working on for sure. Well, well definitely want, don't want to let anything out the bag before it's, uh, before it's supposed to. And I'm definitely want to ask you stuff offline, though. But I want to. <laughs> yeah, but that's awesome. That is wonderful. Well, I did say, well, for me, this is a kind of a later evening. I was going to hold this to 30 minutes, but I would love to, um, um, I'm going to do a little housekeeping and then I ask you just leave us the last uh, thoughts um, and remind us of how we can get in touch with you. But before that, uh, again, folks, if you're at the stage, thanks for um, checking this out. You got to check out uh, Sheena Mullen. She's going to share her stuff in the, um, her contact in a, a short while. Uh, but love for you to engage somehow, hit a like, subscribe, or leave a comment and um, share uh, any feedback or topics that you want us to talk uh, more about. Uh, today, this was again about, we're talking to someone who has used a strategy and a tool to not only, uh, I won't say change, but reinforce the trajectory of her life based on what she uh, goals that she has, but also is spreading the good news and helping other people do the same thing. So you definitely want to learn from it. But uh, Sheena, how can people get in touch with you again? So on Instagram, I am Learn with the Wholesale Queen. Uh, my name is Sheena Mullins. You can find me on Facebook um, just by typing in the Wholesale Queen on TikTok. Uh, my website is learnwiththewholesalequeen.com. So you can find me there. Um, if you're interested in my mentorship, uh, fear not. Um, I, I don't know if you can see my background in the background. Yeah, I was about to ask about practice, that. Practice. Um, that's what I'm going to drill into you, along with all the other strategies that has gotten me thus far. I teach you how to build relationships and I teach you how to keep these relationships. Um, I show you things like 
having that secure contract. And I show you how that if it's in your benefit and someone defaults, you can make money even without going to the closing table. Um, I just had a student last week profited 15 grand because someone defaulted. And if you have that earnest money locked up the right way and the contract is set tight and right, you guess what? You'll make earnest money deposit and still go back around again and actually close on that deal. So not not only can you make money once, you can make money twice if 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 the deal is in your favor. So those are the strategies yeah. and things that we that that you will learn as I mentor you. And that's if you have her or as, as a mentor, because again, those are things that you just don't know unless you just paid the tax or you are intelligent enough to learn from other people's uh i won't say mistakes but experiences they say it takes a smart person to learn from your own mistakes a genius to learn from other people's mistakes and not apply any mistakes but you know we, we learn that's that's awesome that's awesome thank you so much queen um I, I yeah i'm just gonna thank you right there just leave it right there folks uh again uh you gotta check her out and um yeah i just wish you the best and as i always say rising tides it lifts all sails i'm gonna stop uh, so right much. here I will stop right.